But the divorce culture teaches you individuality, mm -hmm. right? Like a, like a statement like this. The scripture tells us that we need to, we need to think the same. What do you mean? I can think how I want to think. He can think. He thinks the way he thinks. I think the way I think. Right. And we cool with that. We cool with that. You can be cool with it, but <laughs> it's gonna cause problems. Right. It's gonna cause division. It's gonna cause separation. And eventually, all he needs is a little space. He's just looking for a little space, mm. and he's gonna get in there, right? right. But how are we gonna think the same? Well, well, the Bible says that He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And whenever there's an issue, whether it's a financial issue, whether it's a sexual issue, whether it's a emotional issue, whether it's a psychological issue, whether it's an issue how to raise the children, the, there's a word for it. There's a word for it. Yeah. I don't give sister less in my opinion. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Welcome to another episode of Win As One Gospel Love Edition. I'm Avian. I'm Caitlin. I am Aramis. And I am Coach D. So, we are here today to still define marriage. Still define marriage. The interesting thing, Papa D, um, after our last call, I did do a little, a little research or whatever, and I asked people how would they define marriage before they were, were married. And it was kind of hard for them to define it after being married. Really? <laughs> mm, yeah. So, um, so I, I think that this is, this, is still, this is still important because I think before going into marriage, you have an idea, but after being married, you're like, mm, I don't know how I would define it now. Really? So I think being in a yeah, marriage I'm interested might... To know what, 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 what would contribute to them now that they are married? Not, it seems like they should be able to define it. Now. Well, one person... Am I right or wrong? Uh, <laughs> No, I, I I agree with that. I just I think well I want to hear what I've got to say first. Yeah. Okay. Well, one person said that before marriage they wouldn't have thought about the business aspect of a marriage. Mm, the economics of it. Mm -hmm. That's why we that's why we talk about it beforehand. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Right. So they they don't see marriage as an economic endeavor. Mm -mm. When that's how God sees it. Mm -hmm. We were talking on the coffee in the morning club about that marriage and money is designed to go hand in hand. And marriage and poverty is designed to be separate. Like, like poverty and marriage don't go together. One of the reasons why we say that is because poverty limits my capacity to love my spouse. Right. Mm -hmm. Poverty limits that. And when God what God had in mind for a husband and a wife was to enjoy each other and, and, and enjoy the wealth that he has for them. That's why he said this in Peter. Peter said like this. He said, husbands, dwell with your wives according to knowledge. Um, oh, man. I'm messing it up. Where's my phone? Dwell with your wives according to knowledge. And the bottom half of that, I'm missing the middle part, but the bottom half is that as being heirs together as heirs together of the grace of life. Mm -hmm. We're heirs together. The idea of heir, of being heirs together, is inheritance, right? They, they're in, there's an inheritance that God has for us uh, of health, of wealth, of peace, of joy. You know, there's an inheritance that we have, and wealth has, happens to be a part of it. And when we look at that, you know, we see that, that God's idea for, for marriage was to, for there to be uh, more than enough wealth so that we can e enjoy each other um, on on levels that that poverty won't allow you to enjoy each other. You know, I use a I use a very um, pediatric example from the standpoint of when I first meet my spouse, our first date McDonald's might be a great first date to take her on, but after so long, I I, I can't keep no 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 no. I don't want to keep taking her to McDonald's. Right. I want to take her to a place that's more expressive of how I love her, of how I want to treat her. I want to take her to whoever got the best, you know, restaurant, whatever five-star restaurant there is in the town. Okay. I want to take her to a place where we, when they pull up, they treat us. Because, see, McDonald's ain't going to treat you like royalty. McDonald's ain't going to treat you like a king <laughs> or a queen. McDonald's going to make you get in line. Right? <laughs> McDonald's going to say, go sit in the dirty, nasty booth. <laughs> right? They're not going to park your car for you. They're not going to greet you and treat you in a manner that you ought to be treated as, as God's royalty. So, But when you go to the five-star folk, they're going to do stuff different. They're going to do stuff different. I want to eventually get to the place where I can, I can express my love toward my spouse 
at a at a restaurant where we got to call and make reservations, and they have your table waiting for you, and they have the candlelight, and they have all the stuff, the ambiance that you want, and you want to experience because that's what it really comes down to. Life is about the degree of experiences and how the things we experience that 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 determines the quality of it. And so, you know, when we talk about the economics of America, I mean, that is that is like like the folks say they quit because the folks the money ain't right. They Absolutely. Quit. The economics ain't right, right? They say, man, that's enough. Mm-hmm. You know, between that, and it all comes under the um, umbrella of incompatibility, you know, but the first two things that, that people say they're not compatible about is one, the sexuality, and two, the economics, yeah. you know? And so we have to focus on that when it comes to preparing couples for marriage. In our Coffee in the Morning Club community, I mean, it's a major part of how we define marriage and how 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 the economics is directly linked to the to the idea of oneness you know we said this everything that that you want as a wife that you want as a husband that i want as a husband everything that i want as a as a being created in the image of god when it comes to the socialization when it comes to the um what's the word i'm looking for Uh, the the um uh, camaraderie. I'm looking for another word. It begins with a C. It comes to the um, connection. The, uh, connection, but it's another word. I want. Okay. Oh, companionship. companionship. That's what okay. When it comes to the companionship, <laughs> <laughs> that that that's <clears throat> that we innately need, right? Why why I say that? Because the Bible says it is not good for men to be what alone. He can't even supposed to be by himself. It ain't good. God said this thing ain't good. I looked that up too. Oh, I just it, when that, that word good has to do with has to do with his value, the quality of who he is as a man, is not good. Why? Why is it? What? What is it that man wouldn't be able to do alone? Procreate. Multiply. Multiply. Mm-hmm. Procreate. Okay, that's good. What else? What's the first thing? What comes before? <laughs> oh, <laughs> love. Love. Oh. He wouldn't be able to love yeah. alone. <laughs> he can't love in that particular instance. He can't love the way. He was created to love alone. Right. He said, it ain't good for you to be alone because you can't express all that love, all that God that I put in you, Adam. You wouldn't be able to express it. See, marriage was God's solution to Adam being able to fulfill all that he was as a man being created in the image and likeness of God. He couldn't be able to love. I, I, I think I said before, to love is life. To love is life. If we're not in love or loving, we're not experiencing life at the highest level, the way God intended for him, for us to, to experience love. So um, he said it ain't good for him. I have a question. <clears throat> I know that you are very, very big on uh, spouses having one account. Yeah. With When it comes to money. Okay. Right. Here's my thing. There are some people who are just really not great with managing money do you feel as as if then those people should not get married until they feel okay with having one account or do you feel like sometimes there are situations where you need to keep things separately because one is not good with money right well okay let me let me bring some clarity to that right so um the idea of one account is there's like let's call that the general account right there's a general account Right, that Leslie and I have, but then she has her own account. She has an account, and I and I have an account, right? That we that we spend from. But then there's the general account. Okay. So so in in this case, now now I see that as two separate things, though, where you have your general account, and then you you have your tributary accounts or your other accounts that you use to pay bills out of. You use to save money out of. You use for your this is your own personal allowance where you put your money. So I, I get all that, but it's all still our money. Like Leslie don't have her money, and I and Demaris don't have his money. It's all our money. Even though she has her own account that that she put money in, she's still accountable to how she spends that money to me. I'm still accountable to how I spend that money to her. It ain't just you know this my account. I do what I want to do with my money. That's the culture of divorce. That's mm-hmm. what the culture of divorce. And 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 if we haven't said it now, we're gonna say it now. That that's the enemy. The culture of divorce is the enemy. Just because I have my own account, don't mean I get to do whatever I want to do with our money. It's mm-hmm. still our money. Yeah. We still are one in in how we spend it. Now that's one issue when it comes to the account, like like the the general account where we put the. 
um, let's say that's where the money goes first. And then, and then we may say, well, here, here is, here is our allowance that we're gonna take out of that. Here's a hundred dollars. Here's a hundred dollars. Whatever it is, it could be a million dollars. Whatever it is, and now that's that's her own personal money that she gets to do. She gets to have so that she can do her her motherly functions, her wifery functions, whatever, whatever it is. But it's still a a the same level of accountability, whether it's the general account or the or the personal accounts. I'll call them. To me, that's a whole separate conversation from a person who can't properly manage money. Mm. That's a whole separate conversation. There shouldn't be any, the reason why I have my own individual uh, account and Leslie has her own individual account separate from the general account is not because we, she don't like the way I manage money. It's not because of that, right? I need to get myself together if I can't manage money. That's the bottom line to mm. it. And I've been there because I, 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 was, I was horrible. Like, like I was horrible. <laughs> like I was bad at it. Right, um, and and I had to get better because because God has not called me to waste money, right. but but now because I understand the value of money and the purpose of it, it's different now. But that's all it is. So that person, if I had if I was coaching a, cu a couple and that was part of the uh, equation, whoever was the one that was in the wrong, I would say, listen, flag on you. Like flag on the plane, like you can't, you got to get right. Ain't no, ain't no. We need, we need separate accounts because you can't manage money. No, you gonna know how to manage money. Now that don't mean you can't get separate accounts mm -hmm. or have an individual account, but you got to learn the value. You know how, va like, like your 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 spirituality, your spirituality is is this is not the only thing, but your spirituality is gauged by how you make, manage, and multiply money. Like your spirituality. He says, if you can't manage this, the, the unrighteous mammon, how are you going to handle true riches? Mm. Right? So how you, how you manage, make, manage, and multiply it is the determining factor, of, or one of the determining factors of, of, of where you are in your level of, of spirituality. Obviously, the first one is love. That's the highest level of gauging where you are spiritually. It's how you love. But, yeah, that's a part of it. So, I mean, we would have to have a, a serious conversation. Like, you need to learn how to make, manage this thing. Like, this morning we was talking about the beauty of oneness on on the purpose level and and, and, and and tapping into each other's gift set, the thing that God has given us to leverage in the marketplace so that we can be a wealth. When you combine what God has given me and what God has given my spouse, when you combine what Kaylin and God has given Kaylin, what 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 God has given Evans, when you combine those things, now we now we become we become twice as um, ex explosive or powerful when it comes to building wealth. When we combine those things, there's a purpose to it. And that, that is a major, major, major component of how we define marriage. It's how you go about building wealth. So that's a part of the definition as well. So I want to take it back a little bit to um, what started the conversation. I, I had a thought on um, why people who are married have a harder time defining and I think, you know, I think the biggest answer to that is the divorce culture and what it does to degrade marriages over time. Mm. And I mean, it's kind of it's kind of hard to to talk about every aspect, but in a nutshell, uh, and I would actually be very interested into into like kind of bringing that to to our podcast table and just talking about all the various different aspects of. of what the divorce culture is and what it does and all the different techniques and stuff like that because I mean no we got to do that people to people do. need to be aware we have to do you know that. I mean it leads to stuff like that that's mm -hmm. interesting that you actually said the word techniques that divorce oh, culture brings for sure right for sure and, and also wow. what's interesting is when he said well it's I mean he's bringing it out but uh, the the aspect of how the divorce culture there's a degrading effect to it mm -hmm. yeah and that's important for us to understand because in the beginning it might be okay it's great mm -hmm. But, but it's getting worse and worse and worse, whether you realize it or not. Right. I, I, I think I think when we all get to that point in, in our youth to to know what the concept of marriage is, you know, just as uh, you know, something that a husband and wife do, right? Or today's age, other stuff. But um, we all kind of uh, romanticize the idea of it, right? And we all kind of have in our minds, you know, like it, it's going to be great. It's going to be this. It's going to be that. And then 
the second we get to that age where you know we we, we are you know in the dating scene where we're kind of preparing mentally you know to like to like grow into that you know like I'm, I'm dating for the purpose of you know finding someone to get married right mm-hmm. even though that's the wrong way to go yeah. about it but but that's that's what we're taught from a younger age you find someone you get married yep. and then you live happily ever after yep. right that's the start of divorce culture right there I mean, you don't even think about that stuff. You 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 learn very early on from cartoons and all the different influences mm. in our life. And this is kind of what I was talking about on on the call this morning. Like it's it, it surrounds you. It literally is like being in the matrix for real for real because at a young age we learn that marriage is the end. You get married, you live happily ever after, and then you die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and really all of that conditioning leading up into when you get married is what contributes to like man you've romanticized this thing you've built it up you you get into that puppy dog stage you get married now what right yeah and that's that's what happens that's what an undefined marriage will yield yeah it's it it makes marriage the end when it's just the beginning when there's so much more to explore i remember caitlin you said something about what what dating does to us Right. I don't know who's in the podcast. We were just talking. But yeah. You remember what that was? Used to, what you yeah, said? dating basically gets you in that, sets a habit for you. Yeah, prepares you. you. Yes, yeah. you, you do more it prepares prepared. you yeah. for divorce because you're mm. you're trying to find what you like in the se- or someone you like, someone you're compatible with. And the second, you know, they do something you don't like or you do something they don't like, oh, he's not the one for me. I'm gonna right. go, mm-hmm. you know, find someone else instead of trying to, you know, really work through or figure out or you know, kind of define your relationship at mm-hmm. that point, mm-hmm. you just move on to the next one, right. you know? So right. it, and that and carries, over, it into carries over into marriage because now you're used to doing that. You've, you've created a habit of, well, once he does something I don't like or she does something I don't like, mm-hmm. that he's not the one. He must not be the one. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Right. And everything, you know, we do, everything we talk about derives from, from the idea of being. And when you when you're when you're in that condition mm-hmm. of you know being or that state that that you're non-committal, you know that the first at the first sign of trouble I'm out of here, mm-hmm. right? Then that that's not the idea or the design of marriage. The idea of marriage is we we meet at a certain level at a certain place. We meet at a certain level of maturity. We meet at a certain level of e- emotional strength, emotional stability, psychological. We meet there, but that's not where we're staying. We're now supposed to grow together out of where we are into a whole nother place, right. out of where we are into a much stronger place, out of where we are into a more vibrant place. That's the idea of committing to someone and loving someone. We start from that, that, that place of I love you and I'm going to grow in my love for you. Whereas, as you brought out, when you, when you look at it from a, from a um, culture of divorce perspective or, or a worldly perspective, then that's, that's not what it is. It's we get married and that's it and, 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 and I'm, I'm, I, this is where we are and, and you know, you got to love me. We prepare for retirement. You know, no, and, right. And people say, you got to love me for who I am. For now. Yeah. For yeah. now, yeah. Right. <laughs> for now, right. but, but I'm expecting you to grow out of that and develop into Right, grow out of that, and I, I never forget when, when Leslie and I first got married, and it was like you know we was reading Proverbs thirty one, and 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 I was looking at how to love a wife as Christ loved the church. I wasn't doing that to the degree that I'm doing it now. She wasn't walking in the degree of Proverbs thirty one that she's walking in now. Mm. At the time, yeah, I loved her. She loved me, but <laughs> that don't mean we're supposed to stay there. Mm-hmm. Right. Like I, I, I think it was last week we was talking about. I, I had a. a, um, a Someone that I was coaching come up to me, and the wife just one day she just she just let it all out. She was crying. I'm talking about she was hurt, she was frustrated, she was disappointed in the state of her marriage. And and I looked uh, as she was saying it. I, I I had the thought come to me, what what you as a wife, what she was, because I knew her, I knew some things about her, what she was currently, as in the state of being, what she was currently, and what she knew about loving, what she was currently as and what it means to be a wife. She wasn't. She didn't have the capacity to produce the marriage she always wanted, because she didn't grow beyond where she was. If you only have the capacity to produce a certain level of loving, then that's all you. That's all you. You're gonna get is right. you know what you're able to produce. Right. 
in order to produce more, you got to grow. You got to expand. You got to develop more skills of loving. You got to develop more skills to vibrate. You have to develop these things. And so that's crucial when it comes to, as you said, the romanticizing of marriage that we do growing up. Mm -hmm. that, that vision that we have of a beautiful home and beautiful children and a beautiful husband and all that stuff. We, when we visualize those things, well, when we're visualizing those things, we're not at a place where we can produce that degree or that type of marriage. Right. But we grow into those things. And that's why when you think about marriage, and, and marriage can't be the end of, of what, or, or marriage isn't the end, or getting married, I should say, it's not the end of what marriage is all about. As we define marriage as God's desired mechanism for a husband and a wife to experience the intimacy, the pleasures, the power, and the purpose of oneness. Oneness is the goal. Everything we need, I go back to what I said earlier, everything we need as lovers, as husbands and as wives is built into oneness. Mm -hmm. And what causes what causes the frustration, the disappointment, the confusion, the lacklusterness, the poor sexuality, the the emotional disconnection is when we're not moving into oneness. But the divorce culture teaches you individuality. Mm -hmm. Right? Like a like a statement like this. The scripture tells us that we need we need to think the same. What, what you mean? I can think how I want to think. He can think. He thinks the way he thinks. I think the way I think. Right. And we cool with that. We cool with that. You can be cool with it, but <laughs> it's gonna cause problems. Right. It's gonna cause division. It's gonna cause separation. And eventually, all he needs is a little space. He's just looking for a little space, mm. and he's gonna get in there, right? right? But how are we gonna think the same? Well, well, the Bible says that He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And whenever there's an issue, whether it's a financial issue whether it's a sexual issue, whether it's a emotional issue, whether it's a psychological issue, whether it's an issue how to raise the children, the, there's a word for it. There's a word for it. Yeah. I don't give sister less my opinion. <laughs> but what about those couples that's not there? Where's there? What about those those couples that don't necessarily believe in the word, but they're still a couple? Well, they got to believe in something. What do they believe in? No, some some don't some believe in the universe. Okay. So then, right. when it comes to that, how how do you how do you coach those couples to come to an agreement? On I something? personally can only help them so far. Okay. Because everything that I, I base my marriage on is, is the word of God. Right. I, I'm, I personally can only take them so far. Now, where I can take them is still a a far place than probably what most people can take. Much further than them. You're further only are. gonna yeah. get so much out of the residual of. Of what's left in fallen man, on the man that's not believing in God, like 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 we're talking about, like there's still a residual that 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 reigns on the unjust as mm -hmm. well as the just. Right. There's still a level or a degree of the goodness of God or the mercy of God that's still there that we can coach them into. Right. They may not be able to come to the degree of believing or entering into the grace or the goodness of God like a believer can, but there's still some place that I can lead them. That I could take it. I've coached couples who weren't saved before, who don't commit to have a commitment to Christ as I do. But but there's a limit. There's a there's a there's a barrier. There's only so far that we can go, right? There's only so much that they can agree on when they have the mindset. Well, I can think what I want to think. I can think about how to raise children, how I want to think raise the children. Okay, the, but there's only so far I can go with you. Well, if that's if you want to if you want to disagree with what God said, then I, I can't help you. You know, so. The limitations that come with their lack of commitment to the word of God is what it is. You know, that don't mean we can't help them. So what do you think about the concept of marriage being a body? And I'll explain. So I'm, I'm looking at intimacy, pleasures, power, purpose, right? And the connection that I'm making um, you, you were saying something just, uh, uh, just, just like 30 seconds ago about, um, I can't remember exactly what you said, but what I was taking from that is that marriage is something that is, uh, you're, talking about, you're talking about how people grow into, um, you know, where, they, where they're supposed to be in the marriage, right? Mm -hmm. That's something that we, that we develop into. And when you think about 
your question and, and how, how do people who aren't believers get to that point? In essence, it's the same way that a believer would get to that point. It's, it's, it's exercise, right? It's strengthening in certain areas to be able to support the growth mm -hmm. of the muscle, right? Mm -hmm. And within the body, there's the ability to be intimate. Within the body, there's the ability to, uh, what, was, what was the other one? To, to, uh, to, to give pleasure. Mm -hmm. There's the ability to, to exercise power. And there's the ability, and there's there's a purpose given to the body already, mm -hmm. right? And, and so when you think of it like that, it, it kind of a, it, it allows me to connect it to if if I want my body to get to a certain point, strength wise or look wise, there's exercise that needs to be yeah, done, do strengthen the strengthening that needs to be done, right? It's not something that's that, that's just gonna happen, right? Right. But here's the key, and here's what I love about that. Every time someone goes to the weights, it don't start with this first. It starts with this first. Mm -hmm. The mind has to be transformed before the body can be transformed. Mm -hmm. If I'm a, if I'm a, if I'm a, decide to lose, you know, 20 pounds, I got to change the way I eat. Right. In order to change, you got to change the way you think. In order to change the way I eat, that's right. that's where I was going. So so right. so effectively. Changing what you believe is what changes how you're able to strengthen your marriage. Right. And if you if you aren't able to, and I guess this was another sub point that I really wanted to touch on is that there, there's a there's a <laughs> when when you when you exercise when you work out you're destroying the muscle. You're killing that bad boy. Right. Folk, most folks think they're building it up. <laughs> no, you're, you're ripping it apart. You're, yeah, you're killing, killing it, it, right? And then in the rebirth, it's being strengthened. Right. Right? right. It's the same thing in marriage. There's a bunch of stuff we got to die to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was touching on this morning. A bunch of stuff we got to die to. Yeah. Right? If you do that, the rebirth is what brings the strength. Right. Mm -hmm. You got to see the resurrection. Right. Mm -hmm. So I just, that's what got me to, you know, marriage can be seen as a body a to body. be maintained. Yeah. It is, it, is, it is that. And that's a good way to put it. It is, it is a process to becoming or developing into the husband that, you, that God has called you to be and the wife that God has called you to be. And in that development comes the capacity to build the marriage you want to have right. or to maintain the marriage that you want to have. All, all, of, that is, all of that is centered, centered on, and you touched on it, on, on, on being, right? Um, as we've been meditating on that, this, this, this thought came to me. We're born into being. And we believe our way into being, right? We're born into the. That's the. That's the. That's the first level of being. Is you're born into being, and we use the example of male and female. Like you're born into being a male, you're born into being a female. But then you believe your way to expand, to expand what you've been born into, right. to expand it into your life. You now, you now have to believe your way into it. Right. And because you have to believe your way into it, it's predicated on what you hear. Hearing is it, believing is directly. Predicated or determined by hearing. That's why the culture is so important. That's why that's why the coffee in the morning culture versus the divorce culture is so important. Yeah. The only way you escape the divorce culture is by entering into a different culture. Right. You can't stay in the divorce culture, hear me talk about this a little bit, and then live in a divorce culture and hear me every now and then and think the divorce culture is not going to influence the way you think. Mm -hmm. You have to you have to as Jesus did, we've been delivered from the powers of darkness and translated into the kingdom. We, we're in a whole different culture now. And that culture of love will help to, uh, as you said, um, die to a lot of what you or what you were trained to think and how you were trained to think under the divorce culture now. Right. You now have a whole other culture speaking to you differently. You brought up the whole idea of, of the economics with this couple. Well, well the idea of purpose uh, the definition, if we defined it, and, the, and we talked about a purpose, we were talking about, I think, Friday, today, we were talking about, uh, Friday, we were talking about um, marriage is about the mandate. And the mandate, the mandate was given to man way in the beginning. The first directive God gave man was one to uh, being fruitful, uh, multiplying, replenishing, subduing, and having dominion. Then he said, man can't do this by himself. He needs his woman, right? Mm -hmm. So the idea of, of, of those five, that fivefold command, 
the idea is industrialism. Like those words speak to um, um, industrializing what God has given you. It speaks to industrializing creation. It speaks to the manufacturing and the manipulating of the giftings and the and the calling that God has upon your life corporately or, or together. It speaks to that. We're, 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 the idea of being fruitful, I know we think about it from a sexual standpoint, and I'm not going to argue with you about that, but that's a word that's more dealing with <laughs> More dealing with yeah, some folks you let folks have. Right, have. I love how you do that sometimes. Yeah, like, I, I ain't gonna argue with you about right. that. But <laughs> on the other hand, right. it deals with the idea of of what what the what I've created you to be. Bring forth fruit in that. Right, fruitful speaks of being. It speaks to the the God commanded us to be fruitful. Is was his was his indirect way of talking to us about who he's made us to be. Mm -hmm. Well, we've been created in the image and likeness of God. And the first aspect that God showed us of who he was was his entrepreneurialism, right? He showed us his creative power, his creative prowess, him as an entrepreneur. So the idea of being fruitful is what I put in you to produce, to create, to form, to fashion. Be fruitful together. Do that together. Right. Mm -hmm. Multiply. Mm -hmm. that, that's the idea of, of, of scaling, doing something again and again and again. Multiply. Once you're able to multiply, now, now, you, now you're able to replenish because you have an abundance. Now you're able to subdue and have dominion. Right now you're growing together. And that speaks to the economics. That speaks to the influence. That speaks to the impact that God has called us to as, as couples. You talk about true power couples. Right, like real power couples, they have their they have their their root system, they have their foundation based in the word of God, based in what God has called them to do, yeah. based on marriage the way God intended for it to be, right. not marriage the way the divorce culture has defined or described it for us, right? Or or given us the the tactics and the strategies to be married. It's just it's it's so different and there's so the two are so contrary. That, that you have to get yourself in a culture that's saying something completely different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, 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 like how you, I like how you brought it out this morning with power couples that part of that power is the influence. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's a lot more people watching your marriage than you think. Right. You know, right. And, and, and how you how you engage, how you interact, how you all of that stuff matters. Right. Because because it's not just about, you know, you inside your marriage, it's about the effect that your marriage has on the community around you. And that's, and that's the idea God had. Yeah. Like marriage is the foundation to the family unit. The family unit is the foundation to the community. The community is the foundation, in our case, to, 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 a, state, to a state or community. Right. And then you have the national community. Right. But the, it starts with the marriage. Yeah. If you have a divorce culture that governs your marriage, then you have a divorce culture or culture that breeds separation, independence, you know, uh, selfishness and all the things that the divorce culture breed. You have that in your family. If you have that in your family, then your children will grow with that mindset. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to send your children out into society and they're going to take that, that mindset out into society. And now you're propagating the characteristics of a divorce culture. But at the same time, we all scream about unity and oneness and all this stuff. And then it never happened. Because we don't have the right mindset. The Bible right. says it like this. How good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Right? And it talks about the commanded blessing. Well, when you apply that to marriage, the unity and the one is that, that the husband and the wife are called to. There's a blessing that's commanded that's upon you uniting the way you're united. There's a blessing that comes upon it. And we know the blessing is centered around building wealth and eliminate sorrow and frustration and uh, anxiety and stress and all other stuff that comes with poverty. So... The idea that they wouldn't, they wouldn't see marriage, or they see marriage now as, as they see the economic side of marriage, mm -hmm. is wonderful. But now we got to learn how to how to deal with it, how to how to build it, and how to how to uh, get it to the place to where um, they can have a marriage that's 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 designed for the, designed for people to have. Yeah, that's good. And also, before we end, you were talking about how you coach um, other couples. Why don't you tell them about your, your coaching sessions and things that you do as the yeah. relationship rep? Uh, yeah, we, I like that Aramis came up with that, uh, that, that tag, that, uh, what we call it, that title, title, or the title, 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 yeah. title relationship rep. Yeah. Because, so my approach, my approach to it is, you know, you, you, have to, you have to know the couple. You have to know them. You have to be aware of them. You have to be able to hear them and, and you know, um, once I hear folks and, and, and get a grasp on what they believe 
you know, uh, which 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 um, yields what they think, you know, which determines how they speak. Then that gives you an ability to coach them. A yeah. coach looks at the uh, the assets first, looks at the strengths first, and analyzes the weaknesses, um, and and looks at the threats that could potentially harm this particular relationship. And then we take that approach. And and I'm I'm about winning, and I'm about being very competitive, right? <laughs> and and hence win is one. Like like I, all we do is win. The focus is on winning. That's my approach. Has been my approach since I was six years old, right? And so. Uh, we coach couples into winning in marriage, and we use we use the Word of God as our foundation to um, to get them to where they from where they are to where they want to be. We, we all can get there, but it takes uh, a a complete commitment to being coached, um, um, receiving coaching because it can be difficult at times. And how can someone book you as a coach? Uh, well, actually, they can they can either go to go to our uh, Instagram. You know, we got our. Um, What's it called? Linktree. We got our Linktree all set up. Yes. <laughs> Folks can go on our Instagram account. They can look, they can go to Linktree or they can go. We put, we, do we put it on the website yet? I don't know if we put it on the website. No, not yet. yet. We put it on um, Linktree. But they can go there and it's easy. You know, uh, we set it up and we got we got everything they need to do to fill out the information and kind of give us an idea of what they need coaching about. And we'll connect with them. And um, listen, I'm telling you, if you're willing to be coached, then I can bring you out of wherever you are. There's a solution. There's hmm. always a solution. That's for sure. He always has an answer for everything. Everything. Well, <laughs> everything. The reason, and to the glory of God, I say this to the glory of God. The reason I have an answer because the word have an answer. The word has an answer. Like, 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 we've been married. Leslie and I have been married 27 years, and from the time God called me, I mean, this is part of my my assignment. Like, God saved me. Part of my salvation equation, or part of the equation of my salvation, was was calling Leslie and telling her that I loved her, that I was going to marry, that I was going to be with her, right? So, so my salvation experience is intertwined with my marriage and me loving my spouse, as Christ loved the church, and He gave me a love. He showed me what love was, and so we've been we've been, you know, married for 27 years. We've been together for 31 years, so we've seen it all personally and then we've been we've been marrying folks and coaching couples for the last 20 years and so like like there's not been much that we haven't encountered or seen and because of my forensic pursuit of studying the word of god you know i'm able to now you know put stuff together yeah well just just <laughs> just be careful because if you do book him as a coach there's certain questions he may ask you and that yeah. means that he definitely wants to answer as to why <laughs> You believe what you believe, you think what yeah. you think, and everything. No, so. that's what it is. But that's how you got to get to the bottom of it. <laughs> yeah, well, I see, get that. See, most folk don't want to get to the root of the issue. Yeah. You got to have a mind to get to what, why, why you think that way. Well, it could, it, it, it could also be that they, they don't know what the root is, too, though. So you help them get there. Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Any last thoughts or points? No? Okay. Oh, take us out, babe. Uh -huh. Well, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Defining marriage. Do we have another a part three? Is it part three next week? Oh, uh, possibly. We got I don't more? know. We got to see. I'm not <laughs> sure. All right. Well, stay tuned. We'll find out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> have a great weekend and thank you for joining us.